Hello, it's a new day and one where I got to head to work. <laughs> so what do we got here? It's about seven o'clock in the morning right now. I got to go in and shower up and get ready for work. But what I have done is got both the top. I'll show you the top in a moment and the bottom welded on. I did get the two sides ground. Uh, with stone ground, actually, at this point, I need to grind the tops, take the, the peaks and valleys off of the welds. Um, you can see the heat signature was spectacular on the on the uh, plate uh, because penetration was spectacular. <clears throat> I laid it so it was just, I had as much area, it laid inside the frame rail. Not, not inside, literally, but on the inside edge. Of the frame rail and basically as I was welding and if I had an overlap here's a perfect example I would just take my cutoff wheel and I'll have to do it under this there's not enough gap there that I'm comfortable with so I just take my cutoff wheel and cut a section out and you can see in the heat signature I welded from here to here and here to here and so on and so forth these you know you'd get up into the little stitches or tacks that I was making but I would cut if I if this section needed to be taken care of I would take my cutoff wheel and cut across there um, to give me the, that gap and then come in and weld it up. And it worked out very, very nice. Um, on the interior side, I did wind up coming back and sandblasting all this cavity out on both sides. And and uh, then I applied what's called a... Uh, it, in, the, it, in the industry, they call it epoxy. and It's a two-part system. But I think it's a, I don't know what it, what it formally is. I'd have to look. Um, this is a lining system. Ooh, all the dangerous stuff. It's a three to one in this case. 100% solid, high build ceramic. Novalic epoxy coating. Okay. So, so in this case, this is high temp corrosion resistant. Part one behind it is part two. Three to one. Part two is black. Part one is white. Part B is black. Part A is white. I think you get the point. Anyway, it, it is for, uh, Sandblasted concrete, scarified concrete, scarified metal, properly prepped materials, and it dries. I've got some on this rusted area, and it dries rock hard. So it's like glass. It is it is extremely tough, uh, rigid or uh, solid. Or whatever the right term is. And you can see in here. But you, I can cut it with a cutoff wheel and trim it and all that stuff. Underneath here, it's it's sprayed within the channel. The back side of this is not sprayed because I'll be doing a significant... I got all this welding and I'll be doing significant welding for the engine mounts and the suspension and all that. But the, the, the big deal was I wanted to get a structural epoxy on the interior side of the frame rail. <laughs> Weld this on and come back with a bomb to uh, uh, spray the inside of the tube. But the thing is that I have a very high-end product on the chassis um, so that I have no voids. The build on this, and you can see I brushed it on. That's It might not be a, that clear, but it's not a, either just, of course, weld. Uh, beads it fell into there but it goes on and it will cure up to a quarter of an inch thick possibly more but on the msds the application is um a cured application is to uh 80 80 thou to, to 250 thou or 80 mils 250 mils so uh, i got probably about a 16th just looking, looking down at about a sixteenth of an inch, and for me, that's plenty. Um, 
because I wanted to make sure that, it, you know, as I'm heating it up, yeah, it's going to burn down a little bit into there and, and I am going to get weld bubbles or, or weld beads that are going to melt into it and all that. But then again, I'll come back and I'll spray it with a with some sort of a chassis paint, an interior chassis paint, those bombs that you pull through with a tube and spray everywhere. So that's the project for the day. This side, I just flipped the frame over. He is sanded, smoothed, and blended. So this relief was in the frame. It's a factory relief in the frame. So I bent this. In the break, I did a taper on the back side here. You can see that. And then when this plate goes over the top, then I'll have a continuous, a continuous closure with an opening right here where brake lines or wiring or anything can come in through here if needed. It's on both sides, it's copied on both sides, welded over the frame. I fired that brake in and of course I welded on the interior side of the frame. There's also two other brakes in here, one right here and one right here. And those are for the um, suspension uh, mounts. So um, that will allow the flat area that was already in the frame and the mounting areas are already right up here. There you can see the hole. So so that would be the, this would be the this would be the same. This would be the same hole, and that's the leading edge on that bend. And the other bend is right, I gotta get away from my camera right here. So you got a flat surface that you can mount your suspension on. The engine mounts will go somewhere in the vicinity, and uh, because it's a hemi, they're toward the very front of the engine, so they might even tie in, somehow tie into the front, uh, front suspension. Don't know that yet, but anyway, uh, that's where we're at today. Well, got started on the sandblasting. Actually, it's my second round on it, I'm trying to grab it after work. I got an hour on it tonight. Got all this all done. I didn't get this rail down the side of it done. But I focused on the interior because I want to get all that in, in that uh, <coughs> epoxy. It, that epoxy, he takes the sand pretty good. You can see right there. And I gotta get in there and, and blast a little more, but that stuff is really, really hanging on to there. I tried not to go right to the edge of the metal there, just a couple of whaps, because I can hit that with the grinder, you know, and clean that off. I don't wanna just focus on the epoxy, but it's taking the sand and doing well. Of course, this side, I went all the way to the edge, but it's the epoxy is still there. I mean, wow, wow, that's all I can say. This side I got down the exterior side of the rail really, really good. I have to finish up, there's little areas, um, you know, just getting the blaster at. Of course, this isn't gonna get, this is coming out. I'm just using that to keep the frame dimensions where they need to be. Um, a little bit in the interior side of there. Although that might be just sand. sand. Let me take a look here. No, a little bit right along there. Focus on that. A little bit in there. This one I got really good deep into there. Um, so, yeah. ah, oh, why are you getting deep in there? So I'm looking at um, getting her blasted. Hopefully, I will finish tomorrow. Of course, I got to flip it over and do that kind of thing. But I made a, I got a concept, an idea. I took a, an old, uh, come on, focus. Wonder why that doesn't focus. There you go. I took an old um, spray nozzle. Plugged it with solder, and that each of the six points, I drilled a hole. I wonder where I got that idea from. And you can kind of see 
Maybe if I hold it up to the light. Come on. You can do it. There, oh, 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 there you can see him. And I drilled in toward the center on all six of those holes. And I'm just thinking I can make take this eighth inch pipe tap and screw that on to a piece of hose and put that hose on to a gun, whether it be a shots gun or a old Harbor Freight gun. And I can, or I got a number two, I got a number two, four, or maybe even a number three nozzle for, um, for spraying a heavy bodied material. And I think I might be able to just go ahead and spray the inside of the, you know, up front there so I can get on top of the mill scale with either that epoxy or some sort of an undercoating. I know they sell that stuff in the spray can, the Eastwood and all that. <clears throat> and that's an undercoating mixture and stuff, but I want the I want the best durability I'm gonna get. I don't want it to fracture off of there. And that's of course down the road. I got a lot of welding to do on it, but I'm just thinking. Doing some R and D right now. But there you have it. Uh almost blasted. Been working with the the uh Gale emailing back and forth on the front end, uh Gale Bridges. And uh, what a wonderful guy. I mean, he's, he's busy. He tells me in his emails anyway that he's busy right now. And he's going to try to get to a proposal for me. But I'm asking him to bid out the front end with the sway bar. Um, and then the four links for the back. Now, this will be one of the first times that I've ever just bought a kit. Yeah, for this, for this I bought a tube axle from Speedway. Okay, for that truck i did do that and and it's got an s10 rear end in him but for this guy here with the with the hemi going in um he's gonna need he's gonna need uh um a nine inch ford that i'll narrow i'll do that myself but the the front end i wanted to go ahead and fab it and i got a lot of the the dims and and uh, I don't have access to AutoCAD right now. I used to have it. My, my subscription ran out since I left my employer and all that jazz. Um, but um, it's it's kind of a horse piece. You buy all the components retail, and I could fab the centerpiece, or I could have this guy do it and pay him a few hundred bucks to to cut it out himself. So and weld it up. Either way. Uh, uh, and I know he's he's done it over and over and over and over again, and so I can I can trust his experience. So that's kind of where it's at. Uh, that's what I'm doing for the night. This is it for tonight. Uh, tomorrow we have one more day that's supposed to be up into the 70s, and then on uh, the following day it's supposed to drop into the 40s. And I believe we are going to experience winter. So. Um, as a result of that, it isn't a big deal to sandblast it when it's cold. It's a big deal to sandblast in the snow when it's cold because it'll, everything will frost over and I'll bring in and it'll be wet. So the race is on. Tomorrow night is date night for my wife and I, so i got to kind of figure out how I'm going to make this all happen. But um, if I can blast the other side, uh, flip it over and blast the top, I shouldn't have too much... I should be able to accomplish that tomorrow. I guess that's that's kind of my plan. And uh, we'll see how it winds up working out. All right, folks. Have a good one. Good day. Flipped it over. Blasted the whole bottom side. You can see it's got primer on it right now. This is just self-etching primer. Most of which will get sanded off anyway uh, as I weld uh, the various pieces onto the frame. Um, it's just a basic uh, single part. And uh, right now, 
Uh, it's my wife. It's a date night. Right now, I got the uh, bottom side sprayed, let it cure, grab a couple more cans, and uh, do the top side. And that'll protect it from the elements because it flash rusts very quickly. That compressor actually started building a little bit of uh, moisture while I was while I was uh, blasting and I could see it it actually removes material faster when there's water in it but at the end of the story wherever I touched the frame it uh, began to flash rust so wiped it down with xylene and sprayed it thanks hey y'all okay so what did I do now what did I do now so you can see where those plates dipped in, welded on. I welded on the, uh, continued, continued the process to the brake mount, brake clutch mount, which I'm going to keep. I welded that on. Yes, it's got a rivet there and there, but I welded that on. Welded and finished that. Primed it with the self etching. Ended the same thing for this side. I've got this loose right now. Very slightly loose, but it's it's loose. Um, I'll, I'll just snug it a little bit. What am I doing? Why? Because I took several measurements from hole locations in the chassis. Both uh, reference points um, along the frame rail to validate that the hole locations that are, I was using were consistent along each rail so I could pick the hole or rivet or whatever location on the chassis um, and marked all over went all the way back to these rivets here use those as reference points Use these body mounts, uh, factory body mounts. Use these rivets. Use, you can see these rivets here. These holes. And of course the axle center line hole on each side. I measure the front of the frame back, knowing that this is, you know, a, uh, a punched out section that I might have a little margin of error, but it was a set of checks all the way down why don't let me back up knowing that it was a you know if i was a little bit off all the way down but the consistent distance all the way down then i came to this hole and measured and so on and so forth all the way down just to make sure i had confidence in the locations of the holes then i began doing a series of x uh, measurements to identify uh, what i needed to do uh, to straighten the frame out because I was using one reference point all along knowing that I got to get to this point I got to get to this point but I was using one reference point up here all along to put the X brace in but I knew I would have to sh sh one side eventually eventually and now that I'm doing the rails I'm ready to start um, welding in the cross member yeah, it's riveted in. It had a great big gap here. I pulled that rivet out. Um, and I need, I need to uh, grind that side, but then I got to the point where I was going to measure. I'll get over there. I'll clean that side, get it ready for weld. But I want to weld that in, and I want to start to box the rear, but I want to weld that in. And these aren't really going to matter because they're, they're to the frame rail, but I have a whole section of bracing that I'm having my son uh, draft an AutoCAD because I, I think I mentioned earlier I lost my AutoCAD license with a it was an old older license and I still have to get to my new one set up but I got him so he's gonna help me uh, so he drew it up last night don't have a, a picture of it immediately available but um, I sketched it gave him the sketch he doesn't live in in the same town as I do he went home, uh, sent it to me last night, and uh, 
and and uh, we uh, went over it last night. It's a it's a real nice setup uh, for for establishing the X brace across this. This of course will go away. Um, I'm going to weld these because that X brace starts at that point right there. No, 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 not right there. At this point right here, that's a piece of <laughs> um, epoxy. But at this point right here, on both sides, it goes back to this point right here. Because that flows down closely to the bottom brace. I'm leaving this is staying in. I'll notch for there. I'll weld it into here. And then I'm going to gusset similar to the bottom, gusset around the top to tie this to the X brace to the frame. And then it'll have a, an 8 inch opening with a cap on the top and a cap on the bottom. I know the top cap, or at least at this point, I believe the top cap is going to, going to go ahead and be level. Because this is flush with the bottom of the floor. And... If I project uh, a tube uh, forward to the even to the bottom of that opening and lift it up, I'm not getting above the center line, or I'm not getting above there in my axle. I'm getting above there. Pardon me. In my axle travel um, isn't is going to stop obviously at the point where I have a bump stop on there. So, so. Um, there you have it. I think hopefully I did a reasonably good job of trying to explain that. But um, once I get the uh, frame straightened, just a quick review, stitch up these areas, finish weld those boxes in, um, continue to use the X brace that I have in there to get the frame tweaked. I got to go roughly a half of an inch in that direction. Uh, with this this side <clears throat> Which seems oh shit. That's a lot. It's not a lot. It's gonna tweak This and this just a little bit if I need to pop a rivet out on this one of these I'll do that and but in any event um, the whole plan is to get the frame straight Exit out in several spots to make sure there's no yaw. That's again why I I measured several spots and my dimensions come up very consistent. There's only one dimension that was off um, a sixteenth, yeah, sixteenth of an inch as compared to every other one. Every other one was a half of an inch. And uh, using a tape measure, that one right there, and I measured to the sixteenth. So there is not a lot uh, to do to, to get this uh, dead on. But uh, so I'll stick a porter power in. This frame has to go forward. So probably, uh, what, what does that mean? If this has to go forward, this dimension is the shallower dimension. So I'll zip that, zip that, stick a porter power in this side, and do -do 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 push it just a little bit forward that way. X it all out again. Tack, tack. Probably leave it in for a little while. Tack, tack. Zip. And zip. Weld those up. And that, that, that spread, that three or four inch spread, will add a significant amount of structure uh, to the final, final frame straightening. You can see that I set the frame on and clamped it to the, uh, to the uh, see, uh, sawhorses. But you can also see that the sawhorses aren't perfectly parallel. This one's in a little bit, perfectly parallel with the frame. I purposefully went close to a radius termination. I established key points on the frame, set my level on there, and on the on the uh, center line of the front <coughs> axle, and then just tweak the sawhorse until I got. Perfectly level. Checked level with my with that check gauge. And you know, guys will complain about <clears throat> well, that's a dial and it's not digital and all that. You can get to a half a degree in there. Look at the freaking needle. You can get to a half a degree <coughs> worth of accuracy in there. 
So, so uh, at this point, then <coughs> clamped it in the case that I, you know, bump into it. Um, and uh, now I will begin by slicing. It doesn't matter which side, but I'm going to slice that side because the welder's over there and all that, just so I get one off and straighten the frame out. Begin welding it back on. Brace it. Stitch weld the back, uh, top and bottom, and uh, that back brace right here, just the hoop, and voila. Do it slow, tack it first, all the things that you've learned in fabrication that you need to do, you know, get it, get it set up and work slowly and get it right. So far, it's turning out just spectacular. And again, I just, I really love these pockets because my fuel line can run in and through there. They do overlap. So it overlaps that, that turn in. The turn in is really nice, so it's not gonna chafe as I bring lines and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, fuel or brake lines or wiring or anything through e either side. I can keep them tucked in, I can keep them hidden and <clears throat> give it a nice clean look and obviously keep it protected now i was originally going to box this center section right here but now with the x frame i'm not going to box that center section i might i might plate a section of it but that allows me a substantial amount of flexibility um, because the x brace or the uh the bracing that i'm putting in there will be a c channel same frame height five and a half inches and um, it'll essentially box it but I'll create a lever tie the two together which will of course hold hold the frame from shifting what I'm trying to accomplish today it'll hold the frame this way it'll substantially tighten it up while at the same time providing me access for placing the mufflers in in here in these two pockets all those kinds of things this this angle is going to be sharper and, and how can I do that when I don't even have a, an engine mocked up in here? Well, I measured um, uh, the engine. I measured the length of the transmission, of a transmission, in this case an A518. Um, I measured the length of a T5. Um, um, A518 uh, Y4 speed, that's a significantly long automatic transmission. Uh, 700R4. A518 was longer, and I, I uh, created a pocket long enough for the tail shaft can go uh, all, as far back as it need go, and I would still have ample room because I'm coming from the frame over, so I can get that tranny in, and then on the on the new unit, then my cross member will be within that section too, further tightening that up. It'll be plated on the top, plated on the bottom and the transmission cross member, wherever it's located, will also support it. So uh, you can see, and then again, we got a cross brace here. You can see how beefy this frame is gonna be. On the back here, because I'm going with four link, um, unless I can find a nice independent, but in both cases, this will all be plated out here so that uh, I can tighten it up and I have mounting surfaces for on, on either side of the frame. Uh, but more than likely all of the four link will be on the interior side so I have I don't create a situation where my tires and stuff won't won't go on won't go won't be as wide as they possibly can even though they can't be 225 is as wide as I can get it in the inner fender but um, there you have it today's project is going to be a fun one um, I'm really going to enjoy it all right more later you know, I just thought, I've never shown you guys how I do this, do this. So this is, this is the template. You can see you got tape pieces taped to it and all that kind of goofy stuff. And basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it in there and walk to the other side. Um, so you can see kind of what I'm doing. I, Okay, so basically, I cut the shape of the frame out, 
And in this case, I want to, you know, I welded that on and that on because I got the frame square and I want to keep it square. So I'm going to box the inside, but I want to also weld it to the bottom brace and across the top on the inside when I weld to the frame. Now this frame, you can see, has a roll Ooh, right here. It's rolled under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right on top of that roll and then I'm going to cut out for the rivets. This is this is tucked in too far, but he sits about center on the rivets. I'm going to tie in the back, tie in the top. I cut to just the inside diameter or inside dimension of the frame here in here and spent quite a bit of time making the template. Cross checked it to make sure it fit that side. It does. And then I go over and I flipped them over because I just chiseled. But um, draw it up on a draw it up on a piece of metal and then cut it out with the plasma torch. And so this is the two pieces. The waist is in the middle. And I hand cut them. I hand cut them. I don't have a CNC. I use a straight edge where I can. Again, we're looking at the bottom side. And I color outside the lines. This is the waist here. And in this case, um, I, I took one piece, not this one, but this one, and I started outside for the shape of the rivets. I'll clean all that up with a carbide burr. And then I'll clamp the two of these together in, um, you know what I mean. I'll sandwich them together, clamp them on the ends, chuck it in the vise, and then smooth everything down. That's how I did the front, that's how I did the back, using the, using the uh, cardboard as a template to guide me through that process. It's a wonderful, it works wonderfully. I don't get, well, I don't know, 16th of an inch, maybe delta. You can see, whoops, you can see that I'm outside of the line. You know, I, I stay on the high side of the line. But I've got a little bit of grinding and cleaning up to do. But when you freehand, it's very hard to get a perfectly straight um, cut. So so you need to get... get um, get the grinder out and go after it so right now when I cut it I see that I got a connection right here and, and right here and so I take off the burrs and I go grab the cutoff wheel and I just touch touch those because they're they're three quarters of the way through and to break it loose so at this point then frame is totally square I welded in the rear brace on the top side I have not flipped the frame over got it all tied um, welded in the top brace on the t uh, uh, pardon me on the top of the frame. Welded the bottom leg right there and right there. Okay, and so he's ready to box the rear, and that'll tie everything together. I'll tie the rear plate up the side and close all of this out. Okay.